Hi, everybody. Uh, my talk is entitled uh, Ways That Wings Make Sounds. Uh, the inspiration for this talk, uh, or this, this paper, uh, came when I was writing this recent paper that came out in the Journal of Experimental Biology a couple months ago. Uh, in it, I start, I was writing, I'm working on the introduction, and I started trying to enumerate what are all the possible ways that wings could make sound, because I was working on a model of hummingbird humming. And this was, it turned into the, one of those things where I, the, this text in the introduction just grew and grew in size, and I was making this figure trying to summarize all the ways that wings make sounds, and it kept growing in size also. And it got so far afield from where I was actually going to be headed in the discussion of this paper that I realized I can't, this is not going to work in this paper. It needs to be its own paper. Uh, also, I most of my previous research has been on birds, and so uh, in, in launching into this project, I wanted to do a better job of educating myself about how insects make sounds with their wings. Uh, and finally, uh, I also had been struggling with figuring out how turbulence makes sound, especially on things like owls. And so I uh, wanted to use a dip into the physical acoustics of sound production uh, as a way of, of getting myself fully up to speed on that uh, way that, that animals make sound. So this is a, a uh, I'll, I'll explain this again later. This is a hummingbird. We recorded it in three different directions with microphones, and here are three different acoustic traces of the sounds that it made in X, Y, and Z. And I'll, yeah, I'll explain that later. So the, uh, in thinking about sounds and how wings make sound, an important parameter is the Mach number. Uh, the Mach number is non-dimensionalized speed. So it's, it's the speed of something divided by the speed of sound. And in air, the speed of sound is roughly 340 meters per second. So here's a table. It's got a few birds at the top. Then we've got two bats here in the middle and then insects down at the bottom. And uh, although there's lots of numbers here, the take home message is really simple. The fastest moving biological structure, uh, at least our flight related structure, is a peregrine falcon diving at 70 meters per second. That's a Mach number of 0.2. Uh, every other number on this table, all the other bird numbers, the two bat numbers, all these insect numbers, they're all far below 0.2 even. Uh, look, we got some 0.1s. Um, and so what that means is that animal flight, all of animal flight is low Mach, where the engineers define low Mach as anything below 0.3. This makes a lot of the acoustics for animals much simpler than it is for uh, airplanes or, or propellers or things like that. <clears throat> uh, and you might be asking yourself, why does he have a brontosaurus on this slide? Uh, that's because I want to digress briefly. There is one possible biological structure that did uh, exceed the speed of sound. In this paper, uh, these authors propose that sauropod dinosaurs, because their tails are really long, because of the distribution of mass, that when they flick their tails, the tip of their tail probably did break Mach 1. Uh, and so uh, they hypothesized that brontosaurus uh, basically cracked their tails like whips. Sadly, uh, diplodocids are all extinct, and so we can't actually test their hypothesis. Uh, but as far as flying animals go, diving peregrine falcons are about as fast as it gets. All of flight is low Mach. There is, though, one important exception to this, and that's our first mechanism. Uh, I'm going to call this mechanism clapping, uh, and the way to, and, and, or another name for it is trapped air. Uh, this mechanism is hypothetical. I don't know of any actual examples of animal wings doing this. So this picture of two feathers with air coming out between them. Uh, this is not meant to be taken literally. This is a, a possible mechanism. So what this is, is that if you have an animal moving appendages in a way that traps air, the air escaping the entrapment can uh, be accelerated to a much higher speed than the speed of the appendages. So even though animal motions are low Mach, it is possible for air escaping entrapment to be accelerated up to uh, or even above the speed of sound. Uh, and what I'm unclear on is whether air speeds far below Mach would also produce substantial sound in some, some circumstance. And I should say, I need to give credit to Bodney et al. 2016. This is a JEB paper uh, that first introduced me to this mechanism. This is their little theoretical diagram. The, this uh, U and this air escaping the space between these two lines, that's their depiction of this mechanism. Okay, why am I describing a hypothetical mechanism? Well, I want to point out this is a mechanism familiar to all of you. Human hand clapping, when you clap your hands together to applaud at the end of a talk, uh, it is the air escaping the space between your hands that uh, is briefly exceeding, exceeding the speed of sound. That's what produces human applause, or at least that's what Fletcher 2013 uh, argued. And I, this is the only paper on this topic that I was able to find. 
Uh, and also finger snapping uh, is apparently also created by the same mechanism. It's the air escaping the space between your finger and your hand that makes the sound. Uh, it's not lo local surface vibrations of, of the skin. Okay, so uh, there's no examples of wings producing the sound. Uh, Bodney et al. Uh, formally considered this hypothesis to explain the wing snapping sounds of mannequins and rejected this hypothesis. Also, uh, in my paper, I considered a different version. The air is not trapped in this case, but it's the same mechanism, the same volume of air that's being accelerated. Uh, in my very crude model in this paper, I found no evidence that hummingbird wing hum uh, is consistent with uh, this, this type of mechanism. Uh, and there are some other cases that don't apply to, to bird or to animal flight uh, because they only occur close to Mach 1, where you get volumetric displacements of, of uh, masses of fluid. Okay, the next mechanism, uh, this one is the reaction to fluctuating aerodynamic force. Uh, and I've been calling it Guten sound because Guten was the engineer in the 30s that was the first one to propose that this is a major way that propellers make sound. Basically, this is the Newton's third law. So this is the idea that when an when a animal such as a hummingbird is flapping its wings, the center of pressure on its wings moves in space and the force vector on its wings uh, both fluctuates both in magnitude and also fluctuates in direction. And due to Newton's third law, there's an equal and opposite pressure reaction to this aerodynamic force. That's what these red vectors are right here. They're the equal and opposite uh, reaction to these blue vectors. And uh, anytime you have a, a, a force that fluctuates in magnitude, fluctuates in direction, or moves in space, any of those three mechanisms, uh, a stationary receiver will hear that, that uh, change in pressure. They will hear it as sound. Um, and again, I need to credit Bodney et al. 2016. They also formally investigated this mechanism. That's what their little F, uh, F sub A uh, over time here represents. They also rejected this mechanism as the mechanism causing sound in mannequins, but it was their paper that sparked the aha moment in my head that made me realize this was probably a mechanism that's really widespread uh, in animal flight. Because of course, all animals produce forces when they flap their wings, and all animals that flap their wings, the forces fluctuate. They're not constant like an airplane wing might be. Uh, and so this is the mechanism that insects use when they flap their wings to create sound. So Drosophila, for example, all Drosophila will vibrate their wings uh, to make uh, sound, near field sound. Same thing with honeybees. Here's a, a paper, uh, uh, Mickelson et al. removed individual wings from honeybees and documented that they got a lot quieter when the wings were missing. So even though when a honeybee is doing the waggle dance, it doesn't have its wings spread all the way, they're partially spread, they are being vibrated, and they are producing aerodynamics. Uh, forces and it's the reaction, it's the, it's the pressure reaction to those forces uh, that is perceived as near field sounds to the nearby uh, nest mates. Okay, so as I said, this type of sound production is ubiquitous in animal flight. This is why hummingbirds hum and this is why insects like mosquitoes uh, whine. Um, this mechanism is the basis for David Lentic's aerodynamic force plate. Uh, basically, he, he's, he, you know, in, in his device, when you put a, a thing in the middle and it creates fluctuating pressure, uh, that pressure was recorded uh, by the, the force plate at the bottom of their sensor. This is, they're not calling it sound in this diagram, but this is sound. <coughs> in, in our paper, uh, hummingbird wing hum is consistent with this mechanism. Uh, here's an example of a, one of our recordings from this paper. So that's the sound of a, of a Costas hummingbird hovering next to a microphone. Um, and all animals make this, uh, so that includes birds. So in, in this paper, what Krista did, Krista Lepiana, my graduate student, she flew barn owls past a microphone, uh, and uh, they were flapping their wings as they went, and so here's the pressure trace over time, and you get these large amplitude, low frequency fluctuations. The wing beat frequency of this owl was about four hertz or so, and so that's the frequency of this fluctuation is four hertz. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is simply the, the aerodynamic reaction to the production of aerodynamic forces on the animal's wing. Every single animal that flies with flapping wings will make this type of sound. Oh, and I should say the magnitude of this was about 90 decibels of sound um, at this microphone, not about a half meter away from the owl. So uh, don't let anybody tell you owls are, are silent. Uh, they are not silent, although this could be so low frequency that it's not relevant to uh, hunting. Okay, the third mechanism, uh, vortices and turbulence. 
This is actually uh, a special case of the previous mechanism of fluctuating aerodynamic sound. Um, there are four contexts in theory where uh, vorticity can create sound. One is that if there's pre-existing vorticity in the air and it gets ingested by the wing, if it hits the leading edge of the wing, the interaction between vorticity in the air with the leading edge of the wing generates sound. Uh, the next is that vorticity, especially turbulence, can form on a surface, such as on the surface of the wing, and it will produce sound as it forms. The third is that as vorticity on the wing is shed by the trailing edge of the wing, it will interact with the trailing edge and produce additional sound. And finally, vorticity that's a long ways behind the animal uh, will dissipate, and this, this uh, vortex dissipation in the wake of the animal also creates sound. The way that uh, that vorticity creates sound is that vortex, when, it's, when vortices are dissipating, is that they stretch out. So if you think of a vortex, a vortex is a packet of rotating fluid. As you stretch it out, the, the local angular velocity, uh, it, the, the vortex contracts and local, local angular velocity reduces due to the conservation of momentum. And a vortex has a low pressure core. Uh, the, the dynamic pressure in the middle is lower than it is on the outside. So as you stretch out the vortex, as this angular velocity decreases, uh, the difference in pressure between the middle of the vortex and the outside, the difference decreases, and that's what causes a, a vortex as it changes strength to create sound. Okay, so of these four contexts, the fourth one we can disregard when the Mach number is low. A, a vortex that's dissipating a long ways away from a solid object uh, is a quadrupole sound source that's really weak at low Mach numbers. So wake dissipation, this is really important for jets and things that are traveling close to Mach 1, but for animals it is not. Instead, the sound sources created by vorticity and turbulence will be dominated by uh, vorticity uh, interacting directly with the wing via these three mechanisms. And uh, there aren't any examples that I know of where birds have clearly made extra turbulence noise for communication, but there are some convergent cases where animals have tried to reduce the sound to, uh, because it might affect their hunting. So this is a frog mouth. This is not an owl. This is not closely related to owls. They have this leading edge comb on their wing, uh, and so do some owls, or most owls, uh, such as this barn owl. Uh, and this leading edge comb apparently modifies vorticity as it is being intercepted by the leading edge of the wing. Uh, also, frog mouths and as well as owls have uh, modifications to the back edge of their wing that uh, may, may affect how vorticity is shed from the wing. Okay, the next mechanism is aeroelastic flutter. Uh, this mechanism turns out to be extremely widespread in birds specifically. So over here on the left, these are four videos from my research. These are hummingbird tail feathers fluttering in a wind tunnel and making sound. Uh, this is a, a still figure from Valentina ba Gomez Bahamon's recent paper. Uh, this is a flycatcher attacking a stuffed mount of a, of a raptor, and you can actually see the fluttering feathers and its outer, outer wing feathers that it's, as it's making sound as it goes by the, the predator. This is a pigeon wing. This is from Robert Neese's recent paper. Uh, what's happening here is that the wing is, being, is held in a wind tunnel in an orientation in, uh, intended to replicate the upstroke. Air is hitting the top side of the wing and then going in between the feathers. And then these guys have this funny lobe on the, on the feather of their wing that flutters and it's specifically it's hitting the neighboring feather to make this kind of subtle buzzing sound. So for any of you that, are, that live in the, the southern part of the US, uh, this is, I don't remember if this is Inca dove or if this is a close relative of Inca doves, but basically doves in the genus Columbina all make a kind of faint but distinctive rattling sound when they fly. That's because of flutter and the feather hitting the neighboring feather. Then here's a paper from uh, Jordan and uh, Areta's uh, recent paper. Uh, so this is a flycatcher. The feathers making sound are right, uh, right there, those three feathers right there. Somewhere they had a video where you could actually see the feathers fluttering, although I couldn't find it when I was looking for it for this talk. Anyway, point is this flycatcher is totally unrelated to this flycatcher. Uh, and <coughs> uh, birds seem to evolve to have their feathers flutter uh, quite a bit. Oh yeah, here's another fe Another video. So this is yet another flycatcher. That that sound right there, I hypothesize, is made by by flutter. This is a, th that species in particular has not been studied whatsoever, so we know very little about the actual details of how it might be making sound. Okay, the next mechanism uh, is also a hypothetical one with respect to flight. It's a whistle. Um, one way you can generate a, a whistle is simply by, by uh, shedding alternating vortices behind a bluff body. 
Uh, this is actually, so whist whistles are actually a subcategory of Guten sound, because, and, and so a, um, a vortex sheet behind a cylinder, this is simply, it, it generates tonal sound because you get fluctuating lift and drag on the cylinder itself. Uh, there's other types of, of whistles, such as an edge whistle that basically requires a hole and a jet of air, uh, and then the air hitting the, the edge on the far side of the hole. Or a whistling tea kettle is another example of a whistle. Animals do whistle when animals expel air out of the respiratory tract, such as uh, caterpillars uh, or humans, like human whistling. Um, there is whistling, but there are no examples that I know of from flight where wings specifically make a whistle. Uh, every single case where the sound has been tonal and superficially similar to a whistle, the mechanism has actually been the previous one, number four, aeroelastic flutter. Okay, so the previous ones that I just described are aerodynamic mechanisms where the airflow itself is what's generating the sound. Uh, the next one, the next mechanisms I call structural mechanisms because it's not, uh, Uh, the structural mechanisms, because the, these are sounds, sound production mechanisms that could be produced in still air. It's instead the interaction between two structures that generates the sound. Uh, but flying animals make these sounds. So frictional or rubbing noise, uh, this is a figure from Laura Maitloff's recent science paper, uh, where what they were doing is they were studying how two overlapping feathers hook together to, to resist being shorn. But uh, feathers, even though they're resisting being shorn, sometimes they do shear. So here was uh, their supplemental video showing first two pigeon feathers being shorn and then two owl feathers. So that's frictional noise. Oh, I, I'll play it again. Okay, and the reason those owl feathers did not make the same sound is that owls have a, have a coating to their feathers, a velvet uh, and so instead of having all the little asperities that, that regular bird feathers do, they have this, this fluffy coating. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, this, the, the, basically this velvet coating to, feather, to feathers uh, reduces frictional noise in flight. Oh, and I should say, um, so what's happening here is that asperities on the two surfaces are interacting uh, and that's what's creating sound. So this is a, a magnificent rifle bird. I actually don't know the mechanism for sure. Uh, all, I've seen the same video that I just showed to all of you. I am guessing that was, that was that sound was frictional, and I'm and based on the kinematics, I'm guessing it's made by the wings. So frictional noise will usually be atonal. However, oh, that's right, and insects do this too. Uh, so here's a paper from 2008. Moths produce extremely quiet ultrasonic courtship songs by rubbing specialized scales. So here, they, they identified scales in the wings that are rubbed against the thorax. Okay, and this is a, that's a high speed, oops, high speed video. Uh, that male is courting a female. I'm unclear which one is the female, but anyway, he's, he's doing that specifically when he's courting a female. Um, and the sound, the rubbing sound is ultrasonic, so they, they recorded it and slowed it down. Okay, so rubbing sounds are intrinsically will tend to be atonal, but they evolve tonality pretty easily. So here's a sage grouse. Okay, there's a lot going on there. Stop that. That is the, the sound that's hypothesized to be a, the rubbing sound, where there are these little bristle-like feathers on the breast of the bird, and then he's rubbing his wing past them. And uh, there is, in this, this spectrogram from this paper, there's distinct tonality that can a sound as the, as the sage grouse is rubbing its wings past its feathers. Um, and the cause of the tonality in this case is not completely understood, but there, it, it, one hypothesis is that the feathers on the breast uh, that stick out vary in the resonance frequency. And so as they're, as they're activated by the passage of the wing, uh, they are then vibrating and the frequency depends on what, which, which patch of feathers in the wing is being activated at any particular moment. Okay, and so in rubbing sounds, I'm including stridulation. Uh, stridulation can be highly tonal. So this is club wing mannequin. Uh, 
Uh, this is the one bird that does this, but this is a, within insects, this is a huge topic. Tons and tons of orthopterans stridulate with their wings. Uh, they in, almost invariably do so when they're perched rather than flying. So here's a bush cricket where one wing has the file and the other, other wing has the, the plectrum, and these two are rubbed together, and it's because of the, 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 um, the highly organized array of, of asperities on one structure relative to the other. When they're rubbed past each other, <clears throat> when the asperities are ordered, you get tonal sound. Okay, another uh, structural mechanism is percussion. This is where two elements are collided together and then they vibrate at a damped resonance frequency. Um, this is a moth uh, in the genus uh, Hecatesia. Uh, this genus, these are called the whistling moths. I could not figure out why they're called whistling moths. Uh, all of them make clicking sounds when they, either in flight or when perched. This one, this is a male, uh, they're sexually dimorphic. So males have this castanet, females don't. Uh, and they are hypothesized to bang their two wings together to make uh, sounds. Uh, mannequins, uh, these birds do this also. So that Bodney et al. paper concluded that the mechanism uh, making snapping sounds on mannequins was, was percussive. Here's a, a series of videos from Kim Bostwick's paper on mannequins showing the, showing the bird banging its wings together right, yeah, right in here, around frame seven. Okay, another mechanism are timbals and other bistable conformations. And so I'm, I'm also stuffing a whole bunch of different specific mechanisms into this uh, one category. Uh, so a lot of animals make clicking sounds, a lot of insects rather, make clicking sounds with their wings when they fly. Um, and in this paper, deaf moths employ acoustic mullerian mimicry against bats using wing beat powered timbals. Here's their, their supplemental video. I'll be honest, I looked at this video a whole bunch and I couldn't see, I just see a flapping wing, as we'll see in just a moment. So here's the wing being flapped. Um, as you can see, it's going coming in and out of focus. Uh, I went frame by frame. I could not actually see, I, I, tr I do trust the authors though. I, I do believe that there's a timbal in there somewhere. Uh, it's just, I, uh, my experience mirrors this, that it can be really hard to try to film a wing in high speed and then identify a really small portion of it that is actually making sound. Anyway, this is the region of wing cuticle that snaps back and forth between two conformations to make sound uh, as the wings are flapped. Uh, here's another species. Again, we've got this little pocket uh, in the wing, and this is it's got partially covered by scales. Uh, here's some spectrograms. Uh, timbals tend to create atonal sound if they're in a wing, even though uh, cicadas and other things like that, if they can continuously activate their timbal, they can create tonal sound, but that will uh, all the papers I found about flying animals, the sounds were clicking sounds uh, made by this mechanism. Okay, another one is called crepitation. Uh, I think entomologists would not consider this to be a timbal, but it's very closely related in that uh, grasshoppers make this sound. Uh, I'm gonna, this is a video that I took. Actually, this, first I'm gonna play it just for the sound. And then, so this is a, a zoom in. Uh, the main point, it's gonna be blurry and out of focus. The main point is that uh, the, the sounds are often made when the wings are flapped, but not always. So there were some silent wing beats right there. Okay, so the sound is made, I couldn't find an image of, of these veins. It's the, the, all the papers that describe it, it's some sort of set of stiffened veins on the hind wing. It's under voluntary control. Uh, both sexes produce it, but males do especially. Like this species, I don't know what species it was, but it was clearly males holding a lek-like territory. Males are flying in circles, making, making that sound, uh, advertising to females. And so it's some, some aspect of the veins of the wing where the, the veins are snapping back and forth between two conformations or making that, that clicking sound in flight. Okay, another one uh, that I stuck under this, even though it's pretty different, uh, a lot of insects make clicking sounds as they spread or shut their wings. Um, so here's an image from this paper uh, where here's a portion of the wing that's locked in place on the thorax, and then here it is where it's pulled out of that lock. Uh, and it makes a clicking sound as it as it goes. And so this is also bistable, uh, also tends to be atonal and impulsive. And then there were a number of papers where I couldn't tell what the likely mechanism was. So here's a paper on a moth uh, engaged in clap and fling kinematics, and it was producing ultrasound as it went. 
but it wasn't clear whether this could be an aerodynamic mechanism or whether it could be a structural mechanism. Uh, the authors of this paper were focused on the, the neurobiology of these sounds and their effect. And so they documented the sounds are made by the wings, but they didn't, you know, a lot of the papers on insects were from uh, before the year 2000, so there tended not to be high-speed video. Also, there tended not to be digital sound recordings that went along with the paper, because of course, most stuff back then was analog. Um, let's see, another one, you might have noticed we haven't had any bat examples yet. Uh, there's this paper by Arjun Boonman, non-echolocating fruit bats produce biosonar clicks with their wings. They ruled out percussion, uh, but they, in their paper, they could not actually tell how the sounds were made. Um, and I have a super speculative, almost certain to be wrong hypothesis. What if the sound source mechanism was actually internal to the wing? So for example, reindeer, when they, when they uh, run around, uh, they make a clicking sound with, ankle, with tendons in their ankles. Uh, you might know the, the Christmas song, Up on the Housetop, Up on the Housetop, Click, Click, Click. That's a reference to the ankle clicking of, of reindeer. There could be mechanisms internal to wings that, that make sounds in flight. Uh, long story short, we don't know how megabats are making these clicking sounds. At least we don't as of this paper. Uh, oh, and then here's another one. This is ruffed grouse. Uh, and your computer speakers almost certainly did not do justice. That's a really low frequency sound uh, and carries for really long ways through the woods. Uh, it would be fascinating to know more about how ruffed grouse make that sound. All right, so I should actually, rather than just listing mechanisms, I should do some synthesis. So that's the part of the talk we're at now. Uh, first is that uh, the mechanisms that I've just described seem to be concentrated in one group of organisms or another. Um, mo or many rubbing sounds are made by birds and all the flutter, all the examples of flutter making sound are in birds. Uh, I think that's because feathers are predisposed to make sounds in those two ways. And uh, what I argued in this paper is that rather than thinking about owls as being quiet flyers, maybe uh, bird flight in general is noisy because feathers are, are intrinsically predisposed to make a lot of noise. Uh, whistles remain a hypothetical mechanism, uh, and most of the uh, and and uh, most types of whistles need a hole to make sound. Um, I just noticed I'm short on time. Uh, bats, are they intrinsically quiet or are they just understudied? Um, then I'll, I'll end with a couple of other tantalizing features. Most of the example videos, the animal is perched while it's making sounds with its wings. That's partially because perched animals are easier to film than, than uh, flying animals. Most perched species that make sounds with their wings when they're perched have relatives that make sounds in flight, including moths, grasshoppers, grouse, mannequins, flycatchers. And also, at least in birds, the sonations are often integrated into multimodal displays, uh, often also including vocalizations. So what's happening here is that animals are making sounds with their wings in flight, and then either they're being selected to reduce their sounds because it blocks their own hearing, or it's audible to prey, uh, or the sounds are enhanced when it's instead a conspecific that hears the sound and responds to it. And so wing sounds are evolving in the context of, of either uh, revealing the animal's presence when it doesn't want to, or uh, revealing its presence when it does want to. And so either communication evolves or quiet flight evolves. Uh, and with that, I think I'm, I'm over time, so I'm gonna stop.